last year. Uh, we're talking about religious ferment and sex in Judaism. It's really talking here about the fact that in, we existed not only in the Mediterranean basin, which is, let me bring this map up here, as we've gone extensively to show what happened to the Jews that were in the West. And between Byzantium, the fights with Byzantium, the Holy Roman Empire, and then on the northern part of Africa with the Muslims, with the Arabs. So all of that was previously learning. Now we're going to move to a different area. We're going to move into an area over here. Let me see if we get it up here, probably, uh, and bring it down a little bit too. Maybe we'll move it around a little bit to try to understand what's going on. Look where you're at now. This is the Mediterranean Sea. And of course, here's Ramla that's in Israel and Damascus. This is in Syria. So we get an idea that this is going to be the western part of the area that we're talking about. But the area that we're going to have in blue, and we're going to exp we're, he's, he's going to explain this, is really uh, 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 an area that covers uh, Baghdad. Uh, over here in Shiraz is in, in, uh, in Persia. Uh, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There were Jews living in all of these different places. Now, here's what we want to talk about. I want to talk about the Karoyim. Now, the Karoyim are the Karaites. He Karaites. I guess the Karaites. Let's say Karaites. Maybe we can pronounce it like that. We'll just call them Karoyim. As this sect developed, became very, very powerful. And as a, uh, an opponent, to a certain extent, with the, with the Jewish people of Talmudic Judaism. So let's see if we can find our way over here and see if we can get uh, number one. I'm looking around, looking around, looking around, looking around. Still haven't found it. Here's three, two, one. Okay, here we go. And let's see if I can get it so we can see it real good. Number one says, right? In the years 6 to 85 to 705, there was a person by the name of Abu Isa, Isaac ben Yaakov, right? In this place, apparently he came from this area, or he was fighting in this area, let's see, known as Obadia, illiterate tailor who wrote books through alleged prophetic inspiration, declares himself herald of the Messiah. He leads a revolt of the Jews against the Muslims, and he's defeated over here. I don't know if he's from Isfahan or in this area, but this area of what is today uh, Persia, he was killed. Number two. In the beginning of the 8th century, Yugdan, his name is Judah al Rai, also in Rai, I guess his name, number the Roa in Hebrew is a, is a shepherd. He says, disciple and heir of Abu Isa. So he takes over from Abu Isa, and here he is over here in a place in Persia today, which is called Hamadan. Now, let's see where number three is. I got to be around here somewhere. Uh, this is a, a lot of things on this map. Let me just hold it for a second until I can find it. I'll be right back. Now, this map is really a chronological map. So that's the reason why I have the, 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 the different dates that we have going on here are scattered all around. So I'm not sure exactly where we were. Let's look over here at number six. Number six is, says, uh, this is Hiwi al-Bakhli, Balchi, rejects both written and oral law. This is over here in a place in Afghanistan, he says, called Balch. So he says that's number six. Now, where was number seven? Seven, 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 seven. They really get confused for me. I'm sorry, I apologize. Here's somebody new. Daniel ben Moses al-Kimisi, notable Kariite and one of the leaders of the Aveli Sion group. So this is a, this is coming from this place called Kimsa, Kumsa, Kumisha, near Isfahan in Persia. So this is just to give a little time, a time log. Let's see, we're never, I thought number eight was over here somewhere. Let me see. Uh, oh, it's hard to find number eight. Six. Number eight. In the year 880, Eldad Hadani arrives at Kairouan. Now remember, Kairouan is part of this Rodnite system. 
And he says, uh, then on to Spain, and from there he went to Spain. So apparently his path is going this way. Tells He sells, tells stories of ten tribes and another group called B'nai Moshe and arouses false hopes. Begins to start speaking about there's a messianic movement and the Messiah is active and so on and so forth. Number nine. Beginning of the 10th century, writes like this. Now look where he's pointing to now. He's pointing to a place called Circesium. Okay, so Circesium, where is apparently, where is that? That is, this is Turkey, so it's in the southern part of Cir Turkey. It has a Latin name. He said, beginning of the 10th century, Jacob al-Kirkisani, so this is Yaakov ben Kirkisani, greatest Karai scholar, Karaite scholar, Karoic scholar. So he's a great, great scholar. He lives in the city in southern, southern Turkey. So you get an idea of where everybody's located. Now, moving over, and these are all the different kinds of people in this time, in these places, in the, with these last names, which indicate their countries of uh, their, the languages that they speak. Going through all this unsettled nature, he says, rumors spreads among Rhenish communities, this Rhenish I think means Rhenish, uh, communities of in an imminent advent of the Messiah. So we have reported that in the year 960. That's number 10. Now we're going to find number 11. It's going to be around here. There it is. In the year 1060, now here we are in Lyon, France. Appearance of a Messiah who performs miracles is noted there of, over there. Number 12, in the year 1096, as we're moving along here, rumors spread of appearance of Elijah the prophet and imminent immigration to Palestine. So this coming from where? From Salonika in Greece, which at this time was under, I think, under the control of the Byzantines. So number, uh, that was number 12. Let's see, I know we have a 13 here somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Uh, let's see, there's a 17, wow. And where's 13? Give me a second, I'll just, I'll be right, there it is, I found it. Over here, we're over here in Cordoba, Spain. Uh, Ibn Arye presents himself, notice, notice the name is, is Arabic, presents himself as Messiah excommunicated, excommunicated by the community. That was number 13. Uh, number 14. A Karaite sect, he says right this. A Karaite priest, his name is Shalomo, announces in gathering of all Israel in Jerusalem. This he announced over here in Cairo. Now finding number 15 has got to be difficult. There's so many different places here and I lose track. Here it is up here. David Alroy, also known as Menachem, or the man that's in his name, Leader of a messianic movement attempts to capture Ahmadiyya and establishes his headquarters there in, and is murdered then again in 1135, apparently somewhere around here. This is near the Caspian Sea. At one time there was a Jewish state in this area. So he said, well, as, as, we, as we saw pre previously. So he said, number 16, I hear 17 is down here. I got that. Where's 16? 16? 16. So on a floor flung completely different uh, response here. He says, 1127, Moses Dari declares himself in Seville as Messiah. And the last one, number 17, way down here. He says, 1172. That's how far close, close we are up to the end of the 12th century. Messiah appears in Yemen, aspiring to social revolution. That's moving along. We're at the beginning of the 12th century. We get an idea of what's going on in the Jewish world. We are under pressure. We are in exile. We suffer at the hands of people who hate us. We develop different kinds of tools to survive. One of them is the attempts of different various sects to find a leader who will bring the ultimate redemption. This is Baruch Fleischmann at the Tikkun Elevator Kolam.